Hey everybody, welcome to the webinar tonight. We've got a great lineup uh, for you today. It's going to be a webinar with a big difference. So we've got some real world-class speakers here with us. Uh, so first of all, guys, I just want to check in that you can see the slides and you can hear my voice, first of all. We've got a couple of organizers on the line tonight, so we're just trying to make sure this works okay. If you can leave a comment, uh, let me know you can you can hear and, and see the slides. That would be great. Yep, okay, Dean says yep, you can see and hear the slides. All good. All right, guys, fantastic. So uh, let's see who's on the line here tonight before we dive in. People are still jumping on. So, uh, hey, we've got Chris Gardner, we've got Dean, um, Debbie, hey Debbie, uh, got Gustavo, got Josh, a lot of cool people here tonight. So, when you put in the comments, um, you know, I know a lot of you guys, but, but for Jesse and Tina, our guest speakers tonight, why don't you put in the comments um, about your business and what kind of business you're in, and what's the number one thing that you really want to get from from this webinar tonight, so that Yasin and Hina can find out more about you. So, just leave us a quick comment. What business you're in? What, what's like the number one biggest challenge you face right now, or what's what's one big thing that would really make it worth it for you tonight to leave here with? And uh, we'll just collect up some of those comments. Justin? Yep. I have a question. Does Joss ever sleep? <laughs> I don't think he does. Joss, are you a vampire? No. Joss says no, he doesn't sleep. <laughs> Can you see the, the, the comments there, Yasin? Um. It's uh, Yasin's first time using GoToWebinar tonight, everyone, so we have to uh, take it easy. On him with that. We can't actually see any comments. Uh, so you go to the, the, the questions pane. Okay. Or you should see the little uh, question mark gets highlighted in orange, and you can click that, and it'll bring up uh, the questions. Where would where would that be? My question shows nothing. If you click on the plus tab, it'll drop down. On beside questions. I've done that, right? And do you see Joss says no? Oh, yeah, he says yes, all good. Okay. Oh. And anyway, guys, and, and uh, those guys in the line, um, I'm wondering, uh, that's the voice of uh, Hina Khan right there, one of our guest speakers, so I'm really pleased and, and uh, thankful that she's made it here to, to give you guys such good um, content tonight. She's a registered psychotherapist and personal development coach who has almost 15 years' experience in the field of human potential. Um, Kina's signature system, it works from the inside out, and she creates personal success strategies for her clients, uh, which are aimed at getting them results in business and life, staying on purpose with your goals, and creating lasting change and habits. And uh, she's going to tell you a lot about that tonight, and, and she's been trained up in Tony Robbins' uh, strategic interventions modality, along with uh, Bob Proctor coaching. And he has also a familiar face on television and is called upon around the world. So I'm really thankful to have um, Hina here with us tonight as well. So thanks, Hina, for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm excited to, um, to speak to your, to your tribe, Justin. This is really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a great introduction for many of them, the ones if they don't know you yet. Uh, and Yasin is going to give you an introduction and a bit about his story as well, for those who don't know. Um, so I think people are coming on the line, a lot of people are registered to get the replay as well, but uh, I think we're about ready to go. So Yasin, are you all good to get started? I am. All right, okay then. So I'm going to hand over the reins to Yasin. I'm going to mute myself and um, I might... I might um, unmute myself and pop back in if I need to want to raise something or what a question we get. But otherwise, uh, it's over to Yasin right now, and um, I hope you guys really take some notes, um, turn off your other 
tabs, get off. There's nothing nothing interesting or useful on Facebook right now. Here's where all the value is. Um, and these are real, real business uh, success strategies. So over to you, Yasin, and um, thanks again. Okay, thank you so much, Justin. Okay, uh, hey guys, really, really excited to be here. Um, and I know Justin has been chasing after me for the last, like, how long has it been? A year and a half. This is a great number for you. So, so for, for, for those of you who don't know me, um, you've only seen me in a group, uh, whatever you've read about me, it's just all rumors. Um, except for the part where my mission is to take over from Pinky and the Brain and take over the universe. Maybe get a shot at starring as the next Sith Lord in the next Star Wars movie. Um, so that's my big uh, moonshot goal. To get a spot on Star Wars. Uh, so just um, in, in terms of who I am, uh, myself and my and my two brothers, an older brother and uh, younger brother, started our business back in the day when dinosaurs still stalked the earth, uh, which would be what, 1991, 1992. Um, and we started the business with uh, $8,000, uh, 5000 which, well, $5, which was ours, and uh, 3000 that that my brother made from selling cars. Um, and uh, started the business in, in 1992. Um, and since then, over the last 24 years, we've grown the business to $150 million. Uh, so it, we've been around this for, for quite a while. Uh, we had a lot of successes, uh, even more failures. Uh, I failed uh, disastrously at, at a lot of things. We've tried stuff. Uh, some things worked, uh, and we've kept doing, doing them. Some, some things didn't work, uh, and we ended up losing a bit of money on those things. Um, but what, uh, for, for background, for, you, for those of you that don't know, um, when we, we started off our business, uh, my brother did an, an engineer with IBM, uh, but this was back in the day uh, when the South Africa still um, had the apartheid system. And basically, that meant that uh, um, if, you were, if you were born the wrong skin color, uh, you had everything going against you. Um, and um, in, in terms of business, basically the government told you where you could look, where you couldn't look, who you could associate with, who you couldn't associate with, uh, where you could open a business, where you couldn't open a business, and what you could and what you couldn't do. So your options are very limited uh, in terms of, of your career, in terms of uh, business. So for example, you, in, in all of the main, in all of the towns, the main streets were allocated white only. Um, so. Um, any other race couldn't open a business uh, in the main street and what the government would do would say okay we've allocated this little piece of land for you and your your kind uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, and you're free to go over there and, and start a business um, so my, my my brother had been an engineer with IBM um, and at some point his boss basically said to him look no matter how smart you are no matter how determined you are no matter doesn't matter where you come to work at 4 o'clock in the morning and go home at 8 in the evening because of your skin color, uh, you'll never make it in the company. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, so you need to accept the, the reality of your of your life. Uh, and my brother had a had just gotten married. They had they had a uh, he had a son, um, and um, he he couldn't see himself uh, working in the system where he gave 300 percent of himself and was really told, sorry, that's um, you're not going to get rewarded for it. Um, so. Uh, at that point, my brother had about $2,000 saved, and myself and my younger brother uh, had saved uh, $3,000. Um, and so he said to us, look, um, I want to start something. I want to start a new business. Uh, will you guys give to start with? Um, and so we, we lent him the $3,000. He took the $5,000. He went to a couple of car dealers in, in town, um, bought a bunch of secondhand cars, um, and resold them. Uh, uh, he made about three thousand dollars on the deal. Um, so we initially, we essentially had eight thousand um, dollars and and started off the business, uh, which is uh, uh, 
So uh, yeah, so we started off the business with with uh, with eight thousand dollars. Absolutely no experience in business, um, and unlike today, uh, where you have a wealth of information, you've got books and courses and blogs and podcasts and webinars and whatever, and, and access to to experts uh, back then, and especially in South Africa, where uh, we, you had no access to any of that information because of of sanctions. Uh, we, we we literally went blind into the business. Uh, uh, we had no idea what we were going to get into. Uh, there was no. It, 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 it wasn't a matter of uh, can I do this, can I do this, or whatever. It, it was. It was really the reality of the situation was. Uh, if we wanted to survive, if we wanted to uh, make something out of our lives, we had to. We had to take the bull by the horn and and, and take action. Um, and and I think for, for for me that that really is the first lesson about business. I I know that a lot of us start uh, businesses and um, and and I think out of everything you can do. Uh, business is one of those things that that's an absolute. It puts you straight, bang in the public eye. Uh, everybody sees what you do and what, and everybody looks to see whether you're going to whether you're going to success, whether you're going to fail. Uh, and, and as people, we I think we, we so uh, we we so scared of, of of not meeting the expectations of ourselves, of our friends, of our family, or whatever that, that we sometimes uh, struggle to get to get going. Um, and so I, I think. Really, from the first lesson passed was that um, there wasn't that, that option. We didn't have we didn't have that option of of, of um, deciding um, uh, should I read the next what book should I read to become an entrepreneur? What what course should I take to to build a business? There was nothing like that. It was either we started something and and we made we made the sale and we had money on the table uh, to feed ourselves and, and for my brother to feed his wife and, and his and his six-month-old child, or uh, we didn't have that. So um, th th that was the first thing. And, 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 and I think uh, also in, in terms of, um, of starting the goal, I think uh, when I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs and, and I ask people, uh, what is it that, that you want to do with your business? Um, I get a lot of people that say, you know what, I want to start 100,000 business. I want my business to go to a million dollars or $10 million and six, seven, eight, nine figures. Um, and w w one of the things that, that I've realized over the years, and, I, and I've seen this with most successful entre entrepreneurs, is that um, that is absolutely uh, the wrong way to start your business. Um, I, I think it's great to have those goals, but uh, all of the successful entrepreneurs that I know and that I've worked with uh, never ever started up their business wanting to achieve um, a financial goal. It was always something more than that. Um, and, and initially, in, in, in the beginning, it, it, it's not even, it's about... Uh, how can you just make enough to survive, uh, to make it to the next month, and the month after that, and the month after that? Um, and, and and for us, it, it was basically really um, when, when we started off. Um, I, I spoke about how we struggled. Uh, we started off doing five thousand dollars a month uh, sales. We leased we leased the premises. Uh, we had to pay rental. We had to pay suppliers. Uh, we hired two people to come on to help us. Uh, and we were literally not making anything. Most months, I think our expenses were close to $4,700, $4,800. And we struggled a lot to just uh, make ends meet. Um, and, and, and I think, again, in, in terms of, of, of being an entrepreneur and, and wanting to build that, that million dollar or $10 million, $100 million company, you have to ask yourself, um, is that a risk that you're willing to take? Um, are you willing, willing to sell your car um, and drive a junker? Um, are you willing to to give up the luxuries of your life? Um, not not take a vacation for five or six or seven years. Um, I, 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 I are you willing to to, to, to take that risk of, of knowing that that for some reason uh, that, that something might not work out and you might end up losing everything? Um, and and it, it it it's one of those things I think that that a lot of us get get stuck with. Um, we, we we need to face the reality of of, of our situation. Um, so, uh, for us, one of the things that, that got us started with was, and, 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 and it, it's something that I want to talk about in, in terms of goals and the, and the way we set goals. Um, so, a lot of us, when, uh, I've noticed this with a lot of entrepreneurs, is that the way we set goals is, is we do this. We, we say to ourselves, okay, uh, what do I want my business to achieve? So, we, we set a goal to ourselves, okay, I want my business to achieve $100,000 for the year, um, and then we work backwards. We say, okay. So to do hundred thousand dollars for the year, we, we literally need to do eight thousand dollars a month. Okay, um, and uh, what we what we then do is we say to ourselves, okay, 
So my business needs to do eight thousand dollars a month, um, and we made that our big our big goal. Uh, what what then happens is because we 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 have no experience in terms of, of actually getting to that number, uh, we set ourselves this number. Um, at the end of the month, or the end of two months or three months, we we said to ourselves, okay, uh, for the first three months of the year, I I uh, I told myself I was going to do twenty four thousand um, dollars. I've only done three or four thousand dollars, and you start to think to yourself, oh my God, I'm an absolute failure. Um, my business is not working. I I'm not good at this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and uh, sports psychologists call this uh, our brain thinking. Um, what I, what what, what, I, what I've learned uh, and, and something that, that we did and, and I've seen all of the successful entrepreneurs do. So the, the, this is called measuring your goals forward, uh, where you set a goal and you measure yourself against that goal. And, and ultimately, when we don't achieve that goal, we, we end up uh, uh, we end up uh, castigating ourselves and, and we end up short charging ourselves. Um, what, but what all the successful entrepreneurs do is that entrepreneurs never ever measure their goals forward. So entrepreneurs do the same thing. So the successful people do the same thing that, that we do. Um, so they'll set themselves a goal. They'll say, okay, I want to do $100,000 for the year. Uh, that works up to $8,000 a month. Um, and what they then do is that um, at, the end of the, at the end of the first month, second month, third month, uh, they also check where they are. Um, so I've done $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. Uh, but at that, at that point, uh, what they do is that they never measure themselves forward. They, they don't say, you know what, uh, um, I I set myself to do twenty thousand dollars. I've only done five thousand dollars. They they rather they, they rather look at, at they, what they do is is, is they uh, is is they they look backwards. They say okay, we started off with a base of doing absolutely no sales. We we, we had no revenue in our business, but now we've got to five thousand dollars. So uh, that that's really a great thing. We've actually we've actually achieved a lot. And then you start working backwards. You say to yourself, uh, wow, instead of Instead of seeing that as a failure, you see that as a success. Because I started off doing nothing, but now I'm now doing five thousand uh, dollars. And then it allows you to ask yourself the question: What worked? Uh, wh wh what worked? How did I get that five thousand dollars? Where did the income come from? Where did those customers come from? How did I get those customers? Uh, was it through interacting with people? Was it through cold calling? Was it through getting into a Facebook chat with someone? Was it through uh, social media, whatever? Um, and and you you then take Take what, what's good out of that, uh, and you work on that, and, and take out the bed. And, and the same like with our business, the months where we did five thousand dollars, we had we had no big big plan to make ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars the next month. It wasn't. Uh, if we made five thousand dollars, we said to ourselves, if we get five thousand dollars for that for this month, we'd be happy with it. And anything extra, uh, anything extra that we make, uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see that as a bonus. Um, and and, and, and that, that's how we grow our business, really. One month, and the next month, and the next month. So the one month we made five thousand dollars, and we got to six thousand dollars. We said, "Wow, that's great! We've actually increased the business by a thousand. So what work? Where did those new customers come from? Uh, uh, where do we get them? What do we do right?" And, we, and the next month we said to ourselves, "Okay, if we make six thousand dollars. We're going to be happy with that." Um, and anything above that again, and it was just a, a constant learning process. Um, so. My, my first piece of advice to you would be in terms of, of, of goal setting. Uh, when you're measuring your goals for your business, don't measure yourself forward because um, our brains are not our, our brains are not uh, engineered and designed to to measure forward. Um, when you do that, you just end up uh, putting yourself in, in, into in, into a mode where where you're constantly questioning yourself and your self worth and and whether your business actually is improving or not. Um, what, one of the things that, that, that did work out for us was that even though we had no financial goals, um, we ultimately we had a moonshot goal uh, for our business. It, 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 it was a goal we asked ourselves from the beginning, and, and I think it, it, it's something that, that all of you guys should do is, is to ask yourself, uh, what what would I want my business to look like in five years' time? Um, and, and I've got a couple of questions that, that I think would, would be worth for you guys to answer. Uh, in, in terms of, of your business, ask yourself, what do you really, really want to create? Out of your business, uh, what is it that you really want to achieve? If, if you look, your, if, if if you were we were to be having this conversation five years from now, uh, and having this conversation, wh how would what would you picture your business to look like? Uh, what what is your picture of your entrepreneurial dream? Uh, wh what do you want your business to become in the future? And, and for us, if when we started our business, we had no experience. Um, but one of the things that that we we 
we realized was a, a significant change from from apartheid to into into a democratic society. Uh, there was a huge segment of the population that that previously had been disadvantaged, um, wasn't wasn't allowed affordable, wasn't allowed housing, um, and uh, did not have the, the the life that everyone that all of us aspired to. Um, and and so we, we realized that that it, there's, as people got more freedom, as people got access to, to resources and wealth that they'd never have before, one of the first things that they would do was would would would, would what would be to upgrade their their living uh, in terms of and, and you have to understand in, in South Africa, it, uh, majority of the population lived in uh, shanty towns and, and shacks um, and uh, um, and brick and mud uh, houses because that, that is what apartheid had force them into, uh, but it, 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 it's a country feed up and people got access to money, people wanted to build houses, and, uh, and we, we realized that, that what they did tell was people would look for affordable housing, and, and when you build a house, what do you want in your house? You, you, you want affordable furniture, you want affordable, uh, you want a kitchen that looks nice, you want bedroom furniture that looks nice, you want cabinets and building covers that look nice, and for the majority of people before that, those things had been, uh, had been just a dream. Um, and, and so for us, our, our moonshot goal really was uh, what, what is it that, that we wanted to create for our customers? Um, and for us, it, it, it was to, to create, a, a, um, to be able to sell to, uh, to customers uh, 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 furniture at, at, at a low cost price, but, but furniture that, that, was, that was stylistic um, and, uh, and trendy uh, while not being uh, more expensive than, than what people could afford, um, and, 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 and really that, that, that's what defined our business. What, what was was to help our customers to to, to enable or to live their dreams, um, and it that was our one moonshot goal. So when you look at your business, I, I want to ask, I, I want you guys to, to look at your business and, and and say in five years time, what is it that, that you want your business to look like? In in, in ten years time, um, if you look back at your business, what, what do you want your business to look like? And again. Uh, I, I know everybody has different businesses, but, but I'm sure you have this, this vision of your business. What do you want your business to become in the future? Uh, um, what, what, what is it that, that, that um, you, you want your business to look like in terms of, of revenue? So in five years' time, do you want your business to be a, a million-dollar business, a $5 million, a $10 million business? And, and again, some people, um, the, the, the ultimate end goal, I, I know a lot of, of successful entrepreneurs, we never ever said revenue is the ultimate target, um, but but that that's a question uh, you need to ask yourself: Where are you going, and, and why why are you going, uh, and why do you want to get there? Uh, and what this allows you to do is, is, is make, when you have that vision for your business for five years, uh, you you can then look back because you say to yourself: Okay, in, in for us, our, the vision for our business for five years was was to have uh, three retail stores. And, and, and even though the, those months we were doing only five or ten thousand uh, dollars for revenue, that, that looked a really, really long way away. Uh, we, if we realistically said and looked at the reality of our business, we, we couldn't even envision how we'd get to a point where, uh, where we'd have enough money uh, to open three, uh, open three stores when we, was, when we were trying to, to, even, to even have one store. Uh, but what it did give us was was it allowed us to, to see where we were going in the future and then to work backwards because we said to ourselves, okay, in order for us to, to open another store from what we have, what what does our business need to achieve? Uh, what do we need to do to achieve in one year? And we then set ourselves one one goal for the year. So we said to ourselves, okay, in order for us to open a business within the next two years, our business needs to, to get to X amount in terms of revenue, in terms of customers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we work backwards. So we said to ourselves, okay, in order to achieve all those things over the course of the year, uh, w what are the tasks that, that we need to do? Um, if, if we need to get to hundred thousand dollars in turnover, for example, what, what is it that, that we need to do? Uh, what what are the, the the exact tasks that we need to do on a day to day basis uh, to be able to get to be able to get to that uh, level? But but, but again, th that, episode, that that requires you to. Uh, to be absolutely brutal about where your business is currently right now, um, and, and you need to get absolute clarity about your business and the state of your business. So I want to ask you guys, if you look at your business, ask yourself this question: uh, What's working? What's working in your business right now? What's not working? What's What's your current level of sales? 
mean, if you set yourself a goal or a target, um, did you meet those expectations? If you didn't meet those expectations, why? Why not? What worked for you? What didn't work for you? Uh, what exactly are you selling to, to your customers and which customers? Uh, uh, for you to meet your sales goals for 2017, for example, uh, what assumptions of, would you have to make for your business? Um, and what, what, what are, what, what are the, the, the trends in your market? Uh, in, in terms of, of where customers are going, what, what, what they're going to do. And um, I think for a lot of us, um, it, it takes a lot, I think, in, in terms of actually having to sit down with ourselves and with our business and be brutally honest about about where we are. Um, and, 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 and for a lot of us, it's at this point where, 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 we, where a lot of entrepreneurs give up because we, we look at our business, where, where we started off all with the dreams of the business, where, where we wanted our business to go, and, and the in-between never ever never ever uh, meets up to the expectation and, and at this point a lot of a lot of people give up um, they go into this stuff you have all of this doubt about what's working what's not working about where what you can achieve with your business and um, we're not willing we're not able to to, to push through um, and Hina is actually um, an expert around uh, around working through that stuff and about facing about facing those doubts Ina? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Yasin. Well, I'll just talk first of all a little bit about um, goals and uh, the system that I work with, which I think, Joss, you said TIR, so you're familiar with thinking into results. But first of all, let's talk about goals. So, um, you know, as you start to think now, as Yasin is saying to you, what is your moonshot goal or what do you really want in 2017? Because let's face it, in a blink of an eye, it's going, we're going to be sitting here going, I can't believe Christmas is around the corner. And the older you get, the faster it goes. Um, and then, it, you know, for any of you that have kids, you really see it because it's like, oh my gosh, they're turning eight or nine or 10 or 15 or 16. Now they want the car, um, you know, moving from like driving the little Hot Wheels cars to wanting to drive the car. So it's going to happen really fast and you want to really now start to tap into what you really want. But don't think about the how. The how is irrelevant. I often say the how is the dream killer. Because what happens is so many goals and desires start stop before it starts because we get hung up on how it's going to happen. I mean, I think, can you guys relate to that where you think of something and then you're like, oh, but then you get into like this intellectual conversation of how it's going to happen and you stop. That's happened to me before, but we don't want to do that. When Yasin talked about those three stores that he wanted to open, they didn't know how they were going to do it, but they held the vision. So what I refer to as that and what I, what I teach is the C type goal. So an A or B type goal is, you know, an A type goal is where we know how to do what we want to do. It's not really that much of a stretch. A B type goal is what we think we can do, but a C type goal is that moonshot goal. That's the stretch where we have no idea. What I want you guys to do is just really take some time and think about what do you really want? And what you have to understand is the first thing that comes to you is probably not what it is. So you want to give yourself the space to go deeper because what we've done is we've created our own mental boundaries of what is possible. Um, and so that's why it's so important to understand how the mind works because that's where this is all going to first start is in the mind. And our results are created in our subconscious mind. And when you start to get that, your life seriously becomes magical because you really truly understand how you can accomplish whatever you want. Because what happens is as you start to use your mind and you start thinking, you elevate your thinking. So, so here Yasin is with his family, South Africa, apartheid. They're not white. They got a lot going against them, right? So they had to they had to elevate their thinking in a way to come up with solutions to come up with the way that they could grow a business with what seemed like which what which seemed like and were huge obstacles so that's what you want to do you know and when you think of your goal it's something you've never done before and because you've never done it it's going to be out of your comfort zone
um, you know, in the questions. I think this is you, Nick, that said that right now you're a personal trainer who's fully booked from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day, and you're now turning away potential customers and you're struggling to come up with the next step. So what I want to tell you is that how to come up with the next step exists. That solution exists because we live in we live with laws and the law of polarity. Everything has an opposite. So if you if if you're not sure how to do it, there is a way to do it. But we have to elevate your thinking as well, and also um, you know show you systems and processes to show you how that can be done. But it can absolutely be done. And I think what you're going through is what a lot of entrepreneurs go through. They kind of reach that point where it's that leveraging their time. Um, and you may not think right now that that's possible. You may not even know, like, how the heck am I going to do that? And that's where you've got to borrow other people's belief in you sometimes. I had to do that. Uh, Bob Proctor is my mentor. Um, some of you may have heard of him. And he really believed in me. And sometimes I had to borrow that belief. Um, and, you know, maybe you have to borrow Yasin's belief or Justin's belief or just trust in people that have done it before. And just remember that you might not know how, but you want to be aware that you can find out how. So for example, I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. So my seven-year-old is deciding what his first car is going to be. He's, he's debating between a Ferrari, a Mustang, and a Corvette. Now, of course, he does not know how to drive yet but he has the awareness that he can learn how to drive. So that's what you guys want to know is that you can, you have the awareness that you can, you can build the business of your dreams. That really works for you and your family. Ultimately goals are for you to grow. Um, and you know, there was a woman who climbed Mount Everest and she was asked how she conquered the mountain. And I just love this. Her response was that she didn't. She said, you can't conquer a mountain. But what she did was conquer the limitations within herself. You know, I don't know what your summit is. I I don't know what you're gonna what you're going to go through to get to your goal, what your moonshot goal or your C type goal is. I don't know what voices you're going to have to shut down in your head, what thoughts you're going to have to evict because they've been renting space in your head for too long. But I do know this, I know that you and I are no different. We're no, Justin, Yasin, we're all the same and everybody on this call, we all have infinite potential. And we have no idea what we're capable of doing. And I also know that if you want to really accomplish something big, which I believe you all do or you wouldn't even be on this call, You've got to be inspired. And I think that's what Yasin was alluding to around the financial goal. A financial goal is not enough. Of course, you know, you want to include a number. Those targets are important. But you want to really connect with your why. Why do you want to make that money? Why do you want to work in a certain way? And, you know, that's, that's what a C-type goal does. Um, and when you, you'll know when you've hit that C-type goal, when you've come up with it, when you feel sick. <laughs> I am serious. I have felt so sick creating my goal and like writing it down. Oh my goodness. But that's when you know you're onto something. And you don't want to let outside circumstances dictate how you're going to live. And know this, that when you start to move towards that goal, you're going to change. Because you have to change. Because the person you are now and what you've done up to now is not going to get you to the next level and your behavior is going to alter. And don't be surprised if it makes other people uncomfortable because they're used to you being in a certain way and it's going to trigger them. But this is where you want to stay the course and this is where who you stay connected to is so important because you want to be mixing with people at that level. Um, so that you can have alternate voices to the ones that are going to try to hold you back that also feed into your own limiting beliefs. So I just want to just start the conversation with you by saying don't let other people um, steal your dream. And then I'm going to throw it over back to you, uh, Yasin, and then we can go into kind of the terror barrier and some other things as well. Okay. Thank, thank you, Hina. 
Yeah. Just noticed, uh, Nick, um, I, I think in, 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 in terms of your question, and I think uh, um, I, I, I totally get the, um, the, the part uh, where, where you end up working like crazy. When we started our business, um, one of our biggest challenges was that uh, we needed to ensure that when customers place orders, uh, we had the capacity to send out those orders, and, and basically that that meant that um, it was a we needed to to before we could even afford to buy our own. We needed to hire out a truck, uh, needed to hire out a forklift so we could load the goods, get the goods loaded onto the truck, uh, and 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 get get and get the truck sent off to the to our customers. Uh, but we were in a situ we were in a precarious situation in, in terms of um, we, had, we had to make balances in our business. Um, if, if, if we hired a truck for the day and we hired a forklift to load the, the goods, we didn't have enough money to hire any, any anyone else to actually drive drive the for, drive the forklift, do the physical work, drive the truck. Um, and I'm not very brave. Uh, my my younger brother is um, slightly crazy. Um, he's the type that jumps out of out of planes. Uh, uh, Climbs mountains. He climbs up. He um, he's currently training to climb uh, Mount Everest next year. Um, he runs ultra marathons uh, and tri triathlons and stuff like that. So he's, he's slightly not. Uh, I'm I don't, I'm not even sure how we related. I don't think we share the same genes. Uh, but initially, in the beginning of the business, we we literally get go to work at four o'clock in the morning. Um, and my technically speaking, you, you need to have a forklift driver's license to drive a forklift. Uh, but my, my younger brother taught himself how to drive the forklift, um, and the two of us would literally load the trucks ourselves. Uh, and uh, my brother then got himself a, a truck driver's license, um, and he he drive the trucks uh, to customers to get to get to, to ensure that our customers uh, uh, got the goods on time. And and in the beginning we we, we did this every. We did this for two years nonstop every day. Went to work at four o'clock in the morning, went home at eight nine o'clock in the evening, um, and um, it, it it really it was it was brutal. Um, and we, we 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 came to a point where, where we were beyond our capacity. We, we we had to say to customers, look, we really want to help you. Um, we'd love to get you your goods today, but it, it's just something that that we can't. And and I think you you need to be honest both with yourself and your customers. Um, if, 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 if if you can't if you if you can't uh, service the customer, um, then you need to ask yourself, uh, in in terms of, of the constraints of your business, what what is what is currently stopping you from from doing that? Uh, what is something that and, and for us we, we realized that there were things that we we're doing in our business in between that we were promising customers we were saying to them, you know what, if you order from us in order to to get to get that customer and not let him go somewhere else, we were promising them them things like you know we'll ensure um, our competitors take three days or four days to deliver goods for you. You can get your goods from us in a day's time. Um, and and and, and we, we we literally thought that that was what was going to uh, make a difference. Uh, but we, we realized that that in 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 in, in, in a long in, in a long term of the business, if, even though um, it was bringing us customers uh, in the now, we, we were just going to end up. Hurting ourselves, um, but we also realized that 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 that, that struggle, um, um, the, the struggle is, is something that, that that all of us go through in our business. Um, and, and, and and for myself, and, and, um, I mentioned earlier that my other brother had gone to university. Um, I was in my second year of university. My, my younger brother was in the first year of university, and and because because of apartheid. Uh, my, my my father really couldn't afford to pay for both of us, and um, we, we were literally using whatever money we were earning from the business to pay for ourselves to university at the same time. But what did entail was going to work at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'd work till six in the evening, uh, and because of apartheid, um, non whites could only go to certain universities. The closest university to us was an hour and a half's drive away. Uh, we would literally drive myself and my younger brother at six o'clock every night. Five o'clock every night to get to university. Uh, we went for night classes from seven to eleven in the evening. Uh, got home at half past twelve. Literally just dropped down on the bed uh, and went to sleep. 
and got up the next morning at four o'clock again to go to work. Um, and we 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 did that for the first couple of years. I did it. I did it through my undergraduate degree, uh, and the first part of of my postgrad. Um, and, and 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 I know I know it it, it, it it's tough. And and, and, and I know it, 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 it is. You get you get to that situation where where, where you ask yourself, uh, what's the next step? What do I need to do? Um, one one of the things that that, that we do that, that we started doing a long time ago, and we now do this every year. That we, we draw a line in the sand in, in terms of our, of our business. Uh, we say this this is the line in the sand at the, at the end of every year. We then I ask ourselves, knowing what we know now about our business, right, and, and knowing where we've come from and what we've achieved, and what's worked and what hasn't worked. Uh, what are some of the things that we, some of the services, some of the things that, that we could remove from our business? Uh, are there current customers that, that we are servicing? Um, that, that we need to get rid of other are are current service offerings that we're making to customers uh, that that we need to change in some way. Um, so if if, 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 you, if you look at your business and, and I think uh, in terms of your specific question, uh, Justin would actually be uh, the better person to answer that. Uh, but um, if, if if you fill book from from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, then I I would start with, with asking yourself in terms of of, of your business constraints. Uh, uh, what, what, what is, 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 are, are there certain customers that, that, that are causing you to uh, that, that you could that you could offer training in, in a different way? Uh, could, could, could you could you train more people together at the same time? Um, could could you, uh, could, could you train people? Could you train people less? What would happen if, if, if in terms of, of of your revenue? So instead of of, of booking yourself six a.m. to six p.m., you only put yourself uh, five. Um, eight to six, uh, and instead of uh, and, 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 and as a replacement for the lost customer, uh, either you reduce the amount of time with customers, uh, increase the, the, the price of your training, uh, so that you make uh, so that um, you, you make up the difference. Uh, for us, ultimately, in in, in our business, it, it, it was just to realize that um, um, customers had no expectation of of of. Getting the, the goods in in a day. That was something that, that we that we decided for ourselves that that was what customers wanted. Our customers were used to getting their their, their goods in four days, um, and, and even if we literally cut it by a day only or a day and a half, uh, even if they were getting the goods in, in two and a half days instead of a day, it, it was still it was still uh, our level of service and our commitment was still years away from what everybody else were offering, uh, and it didn't make our customers look bad. Um, uh, it didn't make us bad in terms of, of, of the experience we're giving to our customers. Um, so, um, we, 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 the, the, the next thing that, that, that really for us uh, was, and, 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 and I covered this before in terms of your goals, is, is that you see the, the journey itself um, as, 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 as the reward uh, for you, and, and to ask yourself, uh, what is it that that, that 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 I really really want out of out of my business? Um, what kind of life do I want my business to give, to to give to give me? Uh, when I go to when I go to work every day, or when I get up in the morning, what am I getting up to work for? Uh, what is it that that's really driving me uh, towards um, towards getting to this to this goal? Um, and 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 for us, um, there, there were a couple of things. Uh, and it's a conversation that, that I will never ever forget. Um, in, in, in South Africa during apartheid, um, in order for you to get a business license, um, you had to get, if you were non-white, you had to get a white nominee uh, as a sort of sponsor for your business. But what that meant was that whoever this person was, no matter how, whatever money you made during the year, you had to pay this person a royalty or a cut of your business uh, for the honor of allowing you to open a business. So. Um, if you opened a retail business, you had to get a you had to get a, a, a white sponsor, and every year for him doing absolutely nothing, uh, you still had to pay him a part of a part of your profits, uh, which you it could be anywhere between just depending on the person, anywhere between five to ten or fifteen percent of, of your business's profits. Um, so that was one of the constraints that we had. The second one was end of the conversation. I'll never ever forget. Then we applied for our business license. The guy that gave us the license looked at me and said to me, 
you know, this, this business, uh, this market is not for people like you. Uh, I don't even know why you're wasting your time and everyone else's time. You guys are going to fail. You're going to go bankrupt within a year. Um, and I, 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 I hope that you know that the fact that you're opening this business, you're taking away, you're taking away work from, from, from white people that, that, that could, uh, from a white person could have started this business and paid his family. Uh, and, and he looked at us with, I don't know what it was, with glee or just, he had this, this real smug on his face and he said, I, I so look forward to the next six months when you come back to me and you declare bankruptcy. Um, and it, it, it was just, it was just one of those things that, that for us, it, it that, that drove us, uh, to succeed, no matter how, no matter how hard, um, things got. Uh, it, it, it was just that, that we were trying to prove a point uh, that, 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 that no matter what people said, no matter what someone else thought about us, no, what, no matter what someone thought about our self-worth, the only, the only people that, that could decide our self-worth or, or, or what we were capable of was ourselves, uh, no one else. Um, and, and, and I think um, a lot of it was, well, us as entrepreneurs, again, it, it's the effect of, of, our, of our mindset. Um, do we think that, that, that we're capable of, of doing what we set out to achieve. Are we worth, are we, are we worth um, the money that, that, that we say we're going to make? Uh, um, am, am I really worth uh, $100,000 or, 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 or $500,000 or a million dollars or whatever? Uh, do I really deserve to get this? And, and, um, and, and I know it, 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 it's something that, uh, um, that, that myself, um, in the beginning, I, I certainly uh, struggled with To convince myself that, that you know what we were doing was worthwhile, was that, that we could actually compete in this in this environment uh, with companies that were 10, 15, 20 times bigger than us, and, and even with, with our second business where we now compete uh, in a business against Coca Cola, um, and just the reality of that, that business that business does uh, 75 million dollars a year, uh, but both of our companies do 150 million dollars a year. Coca Cola South Africa is one of Coke's. Ten largest global markets. Um, they do close to four billion dollars a year. Coke's marketing budget in Africa uh, of over four hundred million dollars uh, is two and a half times our entire group's turnover. Um, and it is it, it, it is something that that, that, that I, I struggle with all with all of the time. Um, when when we go to see suppliers, uh, when we go to see customers. Uh, We've, uh, we've we've launched a, a new sports drink, um, and one of the things that, that that we tried to do early on was to uh, get Virgin uh, to uh, to carry our to carry our drinks in there in all of the gyms in South Africa. Uh, and even though I had all of this business experience, uh, the first time I actually went to to see one of their their buyers, uh, I felt really really out of place. I kept thinking to myself, uh, "Wow, uh, am I even am I even worth am I even worthy of doing business with Richard Branson? Uh, what do I know about what do I know about starting a business? Uh, come on, the, the guy started uh, a multi-billion-dollar company. Uh, he started Virgin Cola. Uh, even he couldn't compete against Coca-Cola. What gives us the what, what, why do we think that, that we're going to we, we're going to succeed where 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 he couldn't?" Um, and, and, and I think in, in terms of, 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 of the, the, the question of, of, of your mindset around uh, uh, of, of, of believing, believing yourself and believing that you can achieve something that, that, that you might not think is possible. Um, you know, do you have any, anything to add to uh, for everyone how to deal with, with those mindset issues? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that's why in many ways this is an inner game first and foremost, changing your results, because that's where it all starts, and that's where we have to we have to make the change in our mind, but coupled with aggressive action. There must be action. Otherwise, we just know a lot, but we're not doing much. Um, and so as I, as I talk about this, feel free to just type in, you know, if you have any questions as we're going along for Yasin or myself, or if this is really resonating with you, because I want to share something with you, and I would love to hear if it is familiar to you in any way. Um, so when we talk about the mind, and this is so important, what Yasin just said. So 
because really, I'm going to actually, let me just break this down in an example. So let's say your current results are that you sell 50 units of a product, whatever your product is. And what that means is that you are emotionally involved in the thoughts of someone that sells 50 units. Your actions and behaviors are of someone that sells 50 units. You know, you make, you make the amount of phone calls of someone that makes 50 units. You, um, you know, you mix with people that are at the same level. But then one day you think, I want to sell 100 units, kind of just like with Yasin's family. They thought, we want to go against Coca-Cola. Um, but you see, as long as you have that idea in the conscious mind, nothing will change. Your results are still going to be of a person that is selling 50 units. And um, but then you start to get emotionally involved in that idea. Like it would really be great to sell that much. And you think of what it could offer you if you could expand. But here's the thing. We don't get what we think we want. We get how we feel about what we think. Okay, so this is a real important distinction. We get how we feel about what we think. So if at your core, you think that selling 100 units would take time away from your family. You'll have to work longer and harder. Or as Yasin had said, you know, you don't, in, in your own self-image, you don't see yourself as a 100-unit person, then that's going to dictate your results. So that's why so many people are not getting what they want because they're not um, addressing the cause. So we will un unconsciously sabotage it because how we feel about it is that it could have negative consequences for us. So if you want to know how you really feel, like just think about your own results right now. What are your results when it comes to your income and how you're doing in your business? You know, what are your results when you even think of like the people that you spend the most time with, the four or five people that you spend the most time with? And do you do what you love? I always say that results are the ultimate polygraph because they don't lie. It just is, and it's neutral. So all it's telling us, and this is, this is what I love about this work, is that all it is telling us is where you are right now. It is absolutely no indication of your future or what is possible for you. It is just where you are and where your awareness is right now. Can you guys relate to that? Yes, or type yes in the question box. If, if that makes sense to you, that you can see how maybe we don't get what we think, but we get how we feel about what we want. And sometimes, you know, we're really, there's a lot of conflict around that. Like we want something, but we don't actually feel really good about it or worthy about it. And so that creates a lot of disharmony within us. Um, Yasin, I can talk about the terror barrier now, or if you want, we can uh, jump on that a little bit later. Absolutely. I think the, I think the concept of the terror barrier actually fits into um, the doubt that, that all of us have about our business and whether we're actually worthy of of, uh, of creating this, 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 this business and this dream and this life uh, that we all aspire to. For sure. So first of all, just looking at the questions here, and for a lot of a lot of yes, and then I completely agree. I feel like I'm always kind of like excuses. So I also feel very determined to better my business. As it comes down to a lack of clarity on the path I want to go down, and we have a lot of yes, absolutely yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you know we've all we've all been there, and the clarity is so. It's so important. And I think also what Yasin said is that we got to get honest with ourselves and also our why. You know, why do we want to do this? So as we jump into the terror barrier, if you guys can see the slides, I just love this quote um, by Eleanor Roosevelt. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You're able to say to yourself, I have lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along. You must do the thing you cannot, you think you cannot do. I mean, how good is that? So in order to grow, we must do the thing that we think we cannot do. 
We have to look fear in the face and we have to walk right through it. Otherwise, we just allow fear to sabotage our success and it's insidious. And I sure, I'm sure you've seen this, right? Where you've seen people, because sometimes it's easier to see it in other people than in ourselves. Like, let's just be honest. Um, and you see them and you're like, oh my gosh, you're just so stuck in your fear. Or for those of you that have kids, it's like, because we have, you know, as adults, you have more experience and you know what they're going through and you know that they can do it, but they're just so scared. Um, but you know what? This is also where confidence comes from. You know, confidence is developed by doing the thing you think you cannot do. Um, you know, and and I have certain this has certainly you know happened for me as well, where I really I had no I had no benchmark to say. Well, I've done this before, so I can do it again. So there's times where stuff has come up for me. And I'm sure for all of you, if you're entrepreneurs starting your own business, investing in yourself. That can be a big terror barrier that we hear, uh, that we feel. But then, as you start to understand this material, I want you to think about your past experience and you'll see that you were hitting the terror barrier. And what you'll see is that you were really navigating through a big change. And what you were scared about was the unknown. And also to leave the familiar. I mean, that friggin' comfort zone, Oh my gosh, it's like the best blanket sometimes, but it can also be suffocating, right? Because there's no growth. Um, so let's take a look at the terror barrier. So on this slide, you see really what looks very simple, these kind of stick people. So, and you'll see bondage as the first, and you see X, X, and X. So the top half represents our conscious mind. The bottom half is our subconscious mind, and then there's the body, which equals our results. So this is a great graphic to illustrate what's going on for us. So here we see the stick person at four different phases. So the body is taking the X type results in the first picture there, um, because it's thinking and emotionally involved both in the conscious and subconscious level of X type thoughts. And um, one of the most critical points here about being in bondage is even though we can think whatever we want, we're locked into this state because we're thinking thoughts that are in harmony with our X-type conditioning. So we're not growing. We're not growing, but things are always changing, so we're really just disintegrating. So the next image, we move into the stage of reason. And, and first of all, just understand that these are, you know, really, they look simplistic, but it's a deep concept. And I'm just glossing over it right now for time, but, but it's so important. Um, and it's something that we will definitely dive into really, really deep. Um, so we move into the stage of reason, and that's where an outside idea comes in, like, like you know, that 50-unit person wants to all of a sudden sell 100 units. So they can entertain the idea in the conscious mind. But if you look at that graphic, they're still having X results. Like, because the results are what's happening in the subconscious. So nothing has changed in the subconscious. And it's that that gets impressed into our subconscious that moves us into action. So that's why nothing is changing. But here's where things get interesting. This is where we start to hit the terror barrier because now we've taken this why idea and we've moved it through the conscious mind and we've pressed it upon the subconscious mind. We've injected it and we're starting to see it as us and we're getting emotionally involved in it and we're mixing. We're truly mixing with the why idea. But we still have the X type conditioning as you can see in the graphics. So they don't mix. Right? Like you have the, you have two opposing ideas living in you at the same time. The part of you like, yes, I want to do this. I want to be the 100 unit person. And the part of you saying, no, let's stay familiar. I don't see myself as that person. So I'm tell you, and I'm sure as you're hearing this, you're thinking of times in your life where this happened. It just doesn't feel good. You can start to feel sick because you're mixing these two ideas. And this is where now with this understanding, you can say, okay. I'm hitting the terror barrier and I'm going to plow through it. And on the other side is freedom. But here's the thing. So now, let's say you, you now become that 100 unit person. But now that's going to become your new X because then you're going to be like, 
I want to be a 200 unit person or a 500 unit person because we are always growing and evolving. So of course the terror barrier does not go away when you go through the wall. You've got to keep with this new idea and impressing it until what happens is that old idea you outgrow. It's kind of like you know, trying to put on a pair of shoes that you wore when you were 10 years old. It simply doesn't fit. You're not that person. Like on a cellular level, you have shifted. Your thinking has shifted. And here's the thing. When you show up like that, sense it and it's not that people are saying to you they're all of a sudden all of a sudden seeing you drive a fancy sports car or anything like that because that may have not changed but energetically you're different because there's been growth and they're like what oh, you just seem happier or you just you know wow your business is all of a sudden doing really well they don't know the friggin terror barrier that you had to go through um, and so, so if we go to the next slide, you know, as you can see here, you know, any time you're setting a goal that results you in skipping a couple rungs of a ladder of success, you're going to run up against the terror barrier. Whenever you go to make a serious change in lifestyle, moving out of your comfort zone, you're going to run up against the terror barrier. And you know what? That happens, frankly, personally and professionally. That first date, like we're always going through this. You know, maybe um, if you if you were young and you moved around a lot, changing schools, you hit the terror barrier. With any change that would come under the category of a major change in your behavior, the terror barrier will instantly and automatically be standing between you and the good that you desire. And when this happens, you have a choice. You always have a choice, and this is what's important. And this is also where we have to take personal responsibility. We are where we are in life right now because of the choices we made. So, and we are personally responsible responsible for that. And it may seem like, well, so and so did that, or the economy, or this, but no, we have to take responsibility for it. I always say that if it's on your plate, you ordered it. And let me tell you something, I've had some things on my plate that I wish I could return, that I could take back to the kitchen, because it was really hard. But I had to understand that I co-created that situation. And in that, there's real power. Because once you realize that you're personally responsible for something, then you can grow and change. You have the power to change. If you stay in the place of a victim or blaming, there's no growth in that. You simply can't grow. So you always have a choice. You can step back into safety and continue to experience the same results year after year, or you can be courageous and experience the growth that you are seeking. I just want to give you a quick example of one time where, when I hit the terror barrier. I was uh, just finishing up my psychotherapy training and um, prior to psychotherapy, I actually started my career in television. And so I was getting a, I got a call from a producer friend who said, oh, there's this um, production company that's looking for a therapist and a host. And I thought of you, you would be perfect because you're both. Well, I didn't like as my self image at the time, I didn't see myself as a therapist. I hadn't been practicing that much. And I had so much terror come up in me because I also was worried about what other people would think. I thought, what is the faculty of my prestigious, you know, college where I did my training, what are they going to think? What are my colleagues going to think? Are they going to think I think I'm Dr. Phil or I'm watering down psychotherapy and this is just pop psychology? Um, and, and I was scared to death to do it and I thought I'm a fraud, you know, I haven't been really practicing for a long time. And um, the good thing is, is that when you're practicing to become a psychotherapist or when you're in your training, you have to be in your own individual psychotherapy. I mean, just like for you guys, right? If you were going to have anybody mentor you in, even in your business or in any way, you want somebody that has also been mentored as well. So I went to my therapist and I told her about this opportunity that I was getting and she said, you know, I think you would be good at it. And I was like, okay, so that made a big difference for me. I had to start to borrow other people's belief. If anybody had said to me like, oh yeah, you don't want to do that, that's really kind of lowbrow or I don't know, something like that, what happens is our logic tries to keep us where we are. So I could have very, lot, very much had all the rational reasons of why I should not have done that show. 
but my husband Paul he was also like you know I think you'd be really good and then and, and what my therapist also said was like you know a lot more anyways I did end up doing it but first of all let me say this the faculty care could care less they you know it brought more um, exposure to their 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 uh, their institution they weren't having meetings about me which is kind of funny how important we think we are <laughs> to other people they're just getting on with their lives they don't really care um, and can I tell you something it was one of the best times of my life we did four seasons if you want to google it the show was called save us from our house I met some of my best friends Every day I would go to work and it was a blast. And you know what? We really helped a lot of people. And I was able to help people off camera. And this is what I think. I think, God, if I, if I went back into safety now, now I didn't have this information back then, but looking back, if I had gone back into safety and let logic keep me where I was, I would have robbed myself of that opportunity and also robbed myself of the growth that happened for me to go through that. So that's what I want you to think about. Like, can you, can you see this in other areas of your life where this has happened? Or are you hitting the terror barrier right now on something that you want to do? So just keep this in mind. This is just what you're going through. And know that every time you hit it, what's on the other side of it is more self-awareness more awareness and the beautiful thing is when you do this when you live your life in this way you are giving people unconscious permission to do the same so that's why this work is just it's it's so important and I just so want this for each and every one of you because I think it not only affects your professional life but your personal life as well and um, I'll just read this here. It says, I know I want to develop my business in certain ways. Personal and emotional situations in my life always set me back from going ahead with the actions I need to, to take to achieve my goals. How do I keep my vision clear with everything else going on? Fantastic question. So there's two ways to do that. Um, there's two ways to really create a change. One is an emotional impact, which is usually negative. So that's, you know, when you hear people hit rock bottom or they've had an emotional impact where, boom, all of a sudden they've got to change because there just is no choice. And the other is constant spaced repetition. And for those of you who, I know some of you on this call are in the fitness arena, in personal training, it's building a muscle. It's the exact same thing. Think about it. If you, you know, look, if you go to work out, every single day or every couple of days with rest so constant consistent spaced repetition you're going to build that muscle and you're going to be you know building that on a daily basis it's that daily application and the same thing goes with this how do you keep your vision clear you have to be with this vision every single day it has to become a habit that you create that you're 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 working with this material that you have a system in place that helps you to keep this alive and focused. It's like anything. You have to tend to the garden of your mind and your idea. If you don't give it attention, like a flower or a plant, you don't water it, you don't put it into the sun, it's going to die. And same with your dreams. Um, so Yasin, I'll hand it back over to you. And if anybody has any more questions, just box. Okay. Thank you, Ina. There's two things I think that, that that for us was really really important, and, and I think especially for um, entrepreneurs, um, is, is is you start to decide what it is you want to do for your business um, um, and where you see your business going, and and I think this is probably the most important question that you that that all of us need to ask ourselves about our business, um, and the first one is this: I want you to ask yourself. Right now in your business, are you a freelancer or are you an entrepreneur? Um, and I, even though it's not obvious, um, they, there's, there's a significant difference between the two of them. Um, so for the way I see it, a freelancer is someone that sells their, their talents. Um, and sure, they may even have a few employees, uh, but as a, as a freelancer, we're just uh, doing a job without a boss. 
Um, so as, as freelancers, freelancers have no exit strategy for their business. There really is no pot of gold waiting for them at the end of the day. Just the satisfaction and the pleasure of making uh, our own hours and being our own boss. Um, on the other hand, entrepreneur for me is someone that, that, that's trying to build something bigger than, than themselves. Uh, so I want you to, when you think about your business and your life, what is it right now? Um, are you a freelancer? Are, are you just someone that, that that's selling your that's selling your talents uh, for money in exchange for the opportunity to be your own boss? Um, or are you someone that, that has a, that, this bigger vision for for your company in three or five or ten years or whatever? Uh, uh, and, and and I think it, 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 it it's important because neither one of those is better than the other one. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong being um, a freelancer. Uh, versus being an entrepreneur or whatever. Um, I, I think we, we sometimes get so stuck up with this, um, with this fascination, and we wear it as a badge of honor that, oh, you know, I'm an, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, and, and, and I want to build this, this 100 million, 200 million, or billion dollar company. I want to be the next Steve Jobs and the next, uh, and the next uh, Mark Zuckerberg or whatever. Um, and, and really, you don't have to. Um, I always give people the example of uh, my brother-in-law, uh, my brother-in-law is, is, is a world-class uh, cardiologist, uh, and really, that is what he is. Um, he has absolutely no aspirations beyond being that, beyond being in, a, in operating theater um, and saving his li and saving lives. Um, he's got an MBA also. Uh, at, absolutely, um, he's a, he serves on the board of directors of, of our businesses. Um, he has absolutely standing inside in, into where our business should go and, and where it shouldn't go. Um, and so many times we've actually said to him, look, um, why, don't you, why don't you join us uh, in the business? Uh, take a more active role. Um, I think it will really, really uh, do wonders for us. Um, and I think especially in terms of our, of our, our beverage business and, and especially our sports drink, uh, where a lot of people where we do a lot of scientific research, we said that we can have the scientific research, and, and, and he's come back and said, you know, uh, thanks for the opportunity, but that's not, that's not me. Uh, I'm happy doing what I do. I'm happy going to work at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, and, con and either consult with my patients or, or be in an operating theater and saving lives. Um, and uh, he has no aspirations for, 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 for one thing, to be the head of a 300 or 400 or 500 million dollar company. That, that's what drives him. Uh, so uh, I, I think it, 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 it's great that, that, that when you look at your business, um, ask yourself, what do I want to be? Do I want to be an entrepreneur? Do I want to be a freelancer? And, and, and I think for a lot of people that, that where you get seduced by this, I want to be an entrepreneur, um, and really you want to be a freelancer, um, you set yourself, uh, because everybody else says, you read the books, you listen to the gurus and the experts, and everybody says you have to build a five-figure uh, six figure, seven figure, hundred thousand dollars a month business, um, and 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 for a lot of us, that is not what drives us. Um, and so, I, I think it's it's it's, it's, um, it's important that, that you make the distinction. And the, the second thing that, that that I see so many so many of us do it, do it absolutely wrong, uh, and 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 I get this right. That the 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 Kool Aid. For, for the day or for the last five days has been content is king, blah, 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 blah. As an entrepreneur, you need to be out there. You need to post content. You need to write long form, short form, do a podcast, do a webinar, do a blog, uh, do Facebook Live, etc., etc. Right? But I want you guys to realize this. You are entrepreneurs. You're not, you know, none of us are writers. Sure, we sure we write, but we're not writers because really what happens, and, and it, it's something that, that maybe you know, I can, can touch on later on, but Here's where I see the problem. As online entrepreneurs, we sometimes we we buy into this whole persona of being a writer because everybody, all of the gurus tell us, you know, if you want to succeed, you need you need to write posts, you need to write content uh, that, that that your customers are going to read. Um, so we, we buy into this whole persona of being a writer. And what is the number one thing that writers are told from day one? Uh, writers are told from day number one, write what you know. Uh, write about what you know, write about what you're passionate about, etc., etc. And then obviously the next step is that our business should reflect what we've known, love, and are great at. So we bind to this persona, write about what we know, and then we build our business around that. 
that our businesses should be a reflection of what we know, love, and, and are great at. Uh, but but what, what really happens is, is that we then start with this assumption that uh, ev that everyone out there, everyone, all our customers, our customers want what we want, and, and that our customers buy what we buy, and our customers need what we need. Um, so we 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 and 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 and, and uh, uh, I I'm not sure if, if any of you know this about me, but in between growing up our growing our business, um, I, we'd come to the point where I think we'd reach twenty five million dollars, um, and I realized that that I I really only knew what I what I didn't know, um, and I we had absolutely no idea what to do next in terms of our business, how to grow the business. Um, and one of my mentors said to me, if you want to build a, a hundred million dollar company, if you want to build a billion dollar company, the best way is to go out and, and, and learn from, from the people that have done that. Um, if, if you want to work, if you want to build a hundred million dollar company and a billion dollar company, we'll figure out what those people did. And, and I actually took time off, I took sabbatical out of our business uh, and, and left the business and went to work uh, for a ten million dollar retailer. Um, it was, people thought I was absolutely crazy. Uh, and it was something that that, that uh, something that Steve Jobs actually says, where he says that that, that we can't connect the, the dots looking backwards. Uh, all all you can do is hope that, that somewhere in the future that the dots will join up in in the future. Um, and for me, I, I literally went and, and got a job in the retail store as a sales associate. Um, I packed shelves, I scrubbed the floor, um, I did stock. Um, I learned everything there was about about their business, what it is, uh, what the processes were, how they did the admin, the front of shop admin, the back of shop admin, how they ordered, who they ordered from, uh, what the, their systems and policies were, uh, what, it is, what, what it is that they, they looked at. Uh, and it, it, was an amazing, it was an amazing opportunity because I ended up getting mentored by someone that, that literally is a billionaire. Um, it's someone that started off this retail company in 1970, and in 40 years' time, he's grown the, the business to, to 10 to 10 billion dollars. He many he and his partner are, are worth over four and a half billion dollars, um, and um, it, it it was just an, an absolutely amazing opportunity to to be able to uh, to work with someone at, at that level to to see exactly what went through his mind, how how he thought about his business, how he operated, uh, what it takes to go from two to three to five. To ten to twenty stores, uh, and because of this opportunity, um, like like Steve Jobs said, you you, you never ever know. Uh, you can't connect those those stuff going forward. You can only connect them back. Uh, you can uh, you can hope that they meet up in the future. And because of that opportunity, um, one of the one of the headhunting agencies that that I worked with at that company came back to me and said to me, Hey, you know, I've got an absolute blue chip client. Uh, one of the largest uh, food and beverage companies in the world. They're looking for someone uh, to help start up uh, or to help grow their business in, in, in a volatile region. Uh, would you like to talk about it? And it, it actually ended up being, um, I actually ended up heading HR for Starbucks across 16 countries. Um, and one of the things, one of the things from that, from that experience was that um, if, if you're from from Toronto, New York City, or Seattle, uh, it's easy to assume that every place, that every other city is a Starbucks on every corner, uh, because th that's all you know. And and, and again, if, if you're a tech startup, you assume that that's because what you do, everyone out there, everybody wants to use their phones to be super productive. Um, and, and then what we really do is that we make this mistake of, ex we extrapolate from our experiences. So we say, uh, and we multiply it by 250 million or 2 billion or whatever, because that is what that is what we assume people want. So, uh, but what happens as, as entrepreneurs is that our friends, our neighbors, our our life, and our our and our needs are not like everyone else's. Uh, no customer out there has the same friends that we have, the same neighbors that we have, the same life that we have, uh, and the same needs like us. Um, and, and, and 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 it's one of those things that, that, that I keep on reading online. That, that business book authors. Um, and so many coaches and, and mentors and gurus keep on saying, uh, create a business that makes stuff or sell services for, for people just like you. Um, and and, and we, we get caught up in the trap because we we, we try to um, we, we, we try to create a business uh, 
just like us. And it, it's one of the reasons that I, if there's one business that I absolutely, absolutely hate, um, and if there's anyone that, that buys from, that's a Whole Foods customer, it's probably going to hate me for this, but uh, it's the fact that I absolutely hate the gourmet food business. Uh, if, if you look at gourmet foods, every year there are, there are probably 2,000 different items that are released by entrepreneurs. Gourmet jars, gourmet jams, gourmet jellies, gourmet salads, gourmet this, gourmet that. And every year, out of those 2,000 people that set up a business, 1,990 fail, fail in their business. Uh, because what happens is that building that, that gourmet business is, is, is our own personal passion. Um, and we base our business around that. Um, so my advice to you guys to, would be, uh, in, in, instead of building your business and, and focusing on, 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 on the things that, that, that you like and, 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 and that you assume other people are, find, find a thriving market and, and try to emulate and improve on, 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 on the market leader. Um, and, 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 and I understand, and, and he and I talked about this previously, is, is that as, an, as an entrepreneurs, we absolutely have to believe in ourselves. Uh, but one of the things that I've also, when I've, I've also learned is that you, that while you have to believe in yourself, you absolutely do not have to believe in in, 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 in a crazy business idea or model that can force you down a road that will eat away your time and money. Uh, and uh, so, so we, 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 that's what I want to say to you guys: is, is that when, when, when you look at your business and you look at your model and, and what you want to create down the years, um, whatever you're doing. The market that you're in right now is it, is it the market that, that, that's try that, that that's currently thriving, uh, and is it is it easy to emulate and improve on on the market leader? Uh, because if it's not, uh, it, it becomes really really difficult for you as, as an entrepreneur to make to make a lot of money in that market. Uh, and, and and again, I, I look at our own business. If, if I look at if I look at our at our beverage business. Um, one of one of one of the products that that that, that, that we sell and, and our, the main core of our business is not it. Uh, when I say to people we make, we, when we, we manufacture soft drinks, people automatically think Coke, right, or Pepsi. Uh, but it is an absolutely if, if you if you try to compete against Coke or Pepsi with, with a cola product, um, they will absolutely you will will absolutely be slaughtered because. All of us, from the time we, from the time we little, we've been, we've been indoctrinated, um, and through taste testing, what and, and whatever, to absolutely believe that there are only two flavors that exist on this planet, uh, or two cola tastes, and either that, that the way Coke tastes or the way that Pepsi tastes, and, and there's nothing in between. But but w within the cola market itself, uh, both Coke and Pepsi also have 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 ever ever secondary market, which is their, their flavor drinks. So what Coke it would be. Would be the Fanta line of products, and with Pepsi, it would be Seven um, Up or Shiny or whatever, or whatever one of the flavored products. And, and, and for us, when, when we looked at that market, that is a market we figured um, that, that we could compete against, or at least survive in that market. Um, so we we started by, by looking at, 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 at. It's a question I want you guys to ask yourself when you look at your market. Uh, way ask yourself your competitors around you, all of the big players in the market. So, for example, if, if, if you are a coach, for example, or you or you are a personal trainer, personal development expert, right? And and, and you, your market is dominated by someone like Tony Robbins or Jack Canfield or Brian Tracy or Paul Proctor or whatever. Ask yourself this question: uh, Where wouldn't Paul Proctor or Tony Robbins or Jack Canfield or or Brian Tracy or, or even even in terms of of this of or women like somebody like Justin? Uh, ask yourself: Where wouldn't those people go. Uh, which are the markets that, 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 that they won't, that, that they're not interested in, um, and, and, and try to find your customers in, in those markets. Uh, try to find the, the edges of the market that everybody else are not selling to. Um, so for, for us, for example, when, 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 when we started our, our soft drinks business, um, and, 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 and it's another one of those things that, that, that I think that, that for some reason, sales it is. And, I, and, I, and I'm not sure why, but, but we have the, we have this uh, this idea in our head that, that sales is 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 is, is an absolute um, one. It's a dirty word. It's one of those things that that that, uh, that we need to do in um, as a, as as 
is, is punishment for, for getting us to where we want to be. Uh, we, we constantly focus on, on the marketing, 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 um, and, and we ignore sales um, because we, 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 we brought up with this assumption that, 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 that sales is somehow sleazy. Uh, and, and that's the biggest mistake you can, that you can make in terms of your business because ultimately cash flow and the amount of cash in your revenue is, is king, queen, Emperor, Dark Lord, and and everything else in your business without without sales, uh, with without uh, without the money coming in every month, uh, your business your business is on life support. Um, so, uh, and that's a bit, bit, bit of advice that I want to give you guys. And and, and I think it, 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 again, I'm I'm going to ask you guys to just suspend your disbelief for a second, but. It, it, it's something that, that, that I see happening so much online when I look at groups um, and, and a lot of the things that, that a lot of coaches and, and mentors will tell you is that go after the high end market, go after high ticket clients. You just started up your business and everybody will sell you a program. Hey, uh, join my marketing program. I can guarantee you high ticket customers in, in 90 days, six months, whatever. In six months time, you're able, if, 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 if you chase after high, if you, if you chase after the high, high ticket customers, You'll be able to build a six-figure profitable business, and and really, that, for me, that is the, the the worst thing that you could ever do in terms in, in terms of your business. Um, and you might ask me why, um, but but number one, when you're starting up your business, when you're growing your, your business, you don't you don't have you don't have the expertise, you don't have the credibility uh, in the buyer's eyes to be to be selling high term uh, high ticket high, high ticket. Um, Requires a huge amount of trust on, on the part of your buyer to, to trust you enough uh, to open their wallets and to give you that to, to pay you that significant amount of money. Uh, but but selling high end also also means that, that that you absolutely need to go through to a sales cycle that is way longer than than, than what you should have to uh, when you're growing your business and, and at least and if, if you take no other advice from me. But this, until you actually get significant amount of high six figures or, or seven figure in your business, uh, your number one concern shouldn't be marketing. It shouldn't be chasing after your dream client. It, it should be about getting generating consistent cash into your business, uh, and, and, and 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 that really means that that that, 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 that the whole advice when people say to you, uh, you need to you need to be you, you need to be. Uh, you, you need to say no. You need to say no to a customer. If the, if the, if the client is not an high, a high-end client, is absolutely the worst advice that, that anyone can give you. And and and, and I see where, where where someone gets an opportunity, and 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 so somebody will come to you and say, you know what, I've, I've got I've only got a thousand or two thousand dollars to pay you for coaching right now, for three months or six months. And you say to yourself, okay, you know what, um, if I work with this person for only two thousand dollars. That means that I'm going to actually close myself off. To I'm I'm going to be closing myself off for the rest of. Uh, where, where, where I say to myself that that I'm that I'm closing my, myself off to the opportunity of actually getting. Uh, to to getting the next to to to, to getting my dream client. Um, and 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 for you as you, as you grow your business, I think one of the things that that, that, that should be really important to you is that. Instead of waiting for that dream client or, or, or waiting for that person that is going to give you five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, is to focus on on on, on the client that, that's right in front of you. Uh, make the commitment to yourself. Instead of rather saying, you know, what, I'm only going to work with with high end clients, to say to yourself, while I'm while I'm building my business and getting the expertise, um, I'm going to focus on on just one customer, and then the next customer, and then the next customer, and then the next customer. Um, yes, David, I can just say, I love what you just said here because it's so true. There's so many people that are sold this idea or told this idea of, yeah, just get high. You, all you need is five high ticket clients, and there's your, you know, uh, revenue for the year or 10 or whatever it is. But so many times, people's, again, if we go back to the mind, because that's where it all starts, people's um, view of how they see themselves does, is not in harmony with that. 
So when you start to actually do the work and you're working with clients and maybe, you know, it's a, it's at in the beginning at a lesser investment, you're also, you know, you're learning as well and you're getting better at your craft and then you're also building up the confidence to be able to go for that probably a lot quicker than just only trying to focus on those high um those high level clients and also realizing that again tapping into your why why do you want to do this you know um is it is it in service of people you know right now and then and, and why do you even want to work with those high income generators like that's also something to ask and I, sometimes I think people are told that that's what you should do, but they haven't really said, is that who I want to work with? Is that who I am meant to serve? Or maybe I want some of that in my business, but I want some others as well. So these are really great questions to get honest with yourself about. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you so, you, uh, that, thank you for that. I think, I think it, it, it's uh, something really important that, that you brought up there, um, and, and I think for me, really, the in, in terms of uh, the one of the 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 the, 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 the last things that, that I, I want to share with you guys, um, and, and, and it, it really is a personal story about of, of, of how we, we grow of how we grow a business, um, and when 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 we started off the 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 the, the soft drinks business. Uh, what one of the things was is is that we we were in a market where our our two biggest competitors are multi multi billion dollar companies. Uh, you you can't get really in terms of, of global brand awareness bigger than Coke and 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 Pepsi, um, and especially in South Africa where we Coca Cola Africa are bottled by South Africa SAB Miller, uh, who are the second largest brewery company in the world. So it was it was literally the, the largest soft drinks company in partnership with the largest brewery company uh, and one of the things that that, 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 that we did um, is that we, we, we literally went and myself uh, not a salesperson not a sales rep but I the, the way we started up selling our product and it, it was we I literally went uh, the, the first the first couple of batches of, of bottles that, that we produced, I literally went to to a uh, grocery store around the corner from us, um, and I said to them, can I see, your, can I see the owner or manager? Um, and when I met the owner manager, I said, look, we've just started this business. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. Um, it's the first time we've, we've created this product. Would you be willing to carry our product for us? Um, and and it, it took a lot because uh, putting myself out there, uh, we'd already have a, had a multi million dollar company, and then saying to someone, Look, I know absolutely nothing about what I'm going to do. Uh, would you take a chance on us? Um, and the person said to us, You know what? Um, uh, I'm not going to pay you for your product. Um, sure, if you want it, you can leave it on consignment. Basic consignment is you leave your product with customers, and, and customers will then, the, 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 the buyer, once they've, sell, once they've sold out, they'll, they'll give you money for. Or whatever they sold to you, and I said to him, "Okay, that's that's fine." And then he said to us, "Number two is the fact that um, we can't keep your product in the same fridge like Coca-Cola, Pepsi. Uh, it's against our agreement with them. Uh, they won't sell it. So if you if you want me to keep your product, you need to you need to go out and and, and procure procure a fridge. Uh, we we literally uh, went running around trying to find someone to sell us a, a small fridge that we could put in the store." Uh, uh, we finally got a stitch fridge, went back to the guy and said to him, okay, here's the fridge, here's the product, what do we do? Uh, and he said to me, well, what you can do is uh, every day between, uh, my peak period is between 12 and 2 when people go on lunch, uh, and people come and buy uh, soft drinks to go with their, with, with their food. Um, so I literally every day for, for a month stood in that store between 12 and 2, and as people came to buy Coke, I said to them, look, I know you like, I, I know you like Coca-Cola's product, but uh, would I be able to interest you in a product that that's literally you can buy the conversion rate was like 40 or 50 cents cheaper than than a bottle of Coke, um, um, and, and and really that, that, that's how we, we, we started that business by, by doing absolutely what was necessary 
uh, contacting people one by one. Uh, we had no aspirations of trying to sell to Walmart or, or Tesco or to whoever else. Uh, it was finding the, the smallest person out there that, that was willing to do business with us uh, and then making it absolutely worthwhile for them uh, to we made it absolutely worthwhile for them uh, to buy our product, and then we went out of our we went out of our way uh, to sell the, to sell that product. Um, and uh, when you when when you're building your business and you're trying to generate sales, um, it, it, it's just one of those things that that you have to be willing if you want to build a significant business, and you have to be willing to do everything uh, in your in your power uh, to go out there and. And, and, and do what you want to do. Um, and, 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 and the second thing that was, that was really, really important was that uh, when we started off the sub dreams business, I, I literally phoned uh, uh, a, 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 a someone else in, 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 in a separate province in South Africa that, that had built a small uh, business that was competing against Coca Cola, but they were, they were so far off that it really didn't impact on our business. And I said to the guy, look, we're starting up this business. I know absolutely nothing. Um, if I buy a plane ticket and fly out tomorrow, would you speak to me? Uh, and he said, fine. Um, myself and my younger brother got on the plane. We flew out. And for, for a day, we literally picked his head. We picked his mind. We asked him a million questions about what worked for them, what didn't work for them, where, who the suppliers were, what, who, who, who to look, who to trust in the business, how to, how to stay out of Coca-Cola's uh, radar. Uh, who to sell to, how to sell, how to convince customers to buy from us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and again, uh, we, we we just then took it one step at a time. We didn't set ourselves big big goals. It was it was just to, to find one customer who would carry our product, and then to find the next customer and the customer after that and the customer after that. Um, and 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 we we, we literally only uh, targeted the edges of the market. We targeted the place where everybody else didn't want to sell to. So we, so Coca-Cola and Pepsi are absolutely happy with selling to the, to the big, big retailers, uh, but not so. Uh, it really isn't worth the time to sell to the small mom and pop stores, to the small corner grocery stores, to the small independents, and, and that is who we, we ultimately went after. We, we found this the, the thriving niche where nobody else was selling to, uh, and we knew that they, they would buy, uh, and 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 we sold, and we ended up literally selling. Saying to those people, so, so when when you guys look at your business, I, I want you to ask yourself, uh, uh, who is the market that, that that everybody else is not selling to? Uh, if, if if you're a coach and everybody's selling to, to market, if everybody's selling to men, ask yourself, would would it be worthwhile for me to sell to women? Or if everybody's selling to women, uh, ask yourself, would it be worthwhile for me to to sell to to men? And and, and flip around the, the the equation of of your market. Um, and uh, w w one of one 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 of the 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 the, 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 the biggest takeaways I think for, for us um, I, I I think I mentioned earlier on was, was the fact that um, even though it absolutely scared me was the fact that what was w when I left our business uh, I literally uh, for a couple of years left the business gave up everything that that. That I had in terms of, of, of income, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, to go and learn from someone uh, and get mentored by someone who would 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 build the business uh, that that uh, would would build the billion dollar business. And, and, and the, the things that, that I learned in those two years working with him, uh, what 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 stuff that that if I if I, if I tried learning by myself. Uh, would have taken me years and years and years. Um, so my one advice to you guys is, is that if you get an opportunity, um, it, it, it's something that, that, that I know even, even this year I spent literally uh, close to $120,000 in, 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 in hiring uh, three coaches, well, two coaches and, and a mentor to help us take our business from 175 to $300 million. Um, and, and even people like you know, will tell you, for example, that even despite her own successes, um, she she actually she she recently took took a huge step in her own life by by working with a mean mentor with for Proctor, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I 
I, I muted myself, so I was just talking to myself. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, Yasin. I was just uh, unmuting myself when you said the last bit there. Okay, I said I said in, in terms of uh, of finding a mentor and, and, and aspiring to to work with someone else, and it completely raises the bar for yourself. I was saying how even with with you uh, recently, when you've taken the, this huge step. Uh, to work with someone like like Bob Proctor. Yeah, oh my gosh. This was, uh, absolutely, and you know, it was one of those um, situations where, again, I hit the terror barrier, it was out of my comfort zone, um, because it would require me to step into a bigger opportunity. And we think that's what we want, right? Like we want these bigger opportunities and that's what we're going for, but sometimes when they show up, it's like, holy crap, am I really ready? for this. But um, but I knew that I couldn't say no to the opportunity to be met, mentored by him and work with him. And so one of the things that I do with PGI, the Proctor Gallagher Institute, is facilitate a program called Thinking Into Results. And the reason I do it is because I'm a product of that program, meaning I had just taken it. When Bob and I first started working together, Bob was, you know, we were talking about my own programs. But here was the thing, I was always coming back to this material. Whether I was working with couples, individuals, or business people, it didn't matter because the material and the way that it's ex explained is based on 50 years of research and science. And I thought, you know, why, why reinvent the wheel? It's right here and um, all the work has been done and now it's a matter of facilitating it, getting it out there to as many people as I can because I saw firsthand the difference that it made in my life once you start thinking, really seriously thinking into the results that you really want. It's so phenomenal once you understand how to do that and um, that's probably, but that was an evolution, you know, I had to come to that. I had to say yes, and it was something that I had to come to. It wasn't something that I, you know, just said yes immediately to. So, you know, it was really about, and really what I had to do again was deal with my own mental boundaries of what is possible. Absolutely. Thanks, Yasin. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, Hina. Um, one of the things that, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, and, and uh, you guys might think it, 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 it's really strange, uh, and especially if you, if you like look look at me and the success that, that, that we've achieved. Yeah. But I, the reason why it took Justin a year and a half to get me onto this webinar is because I'm absolutely petrified of, um, and even though in, in my corporate career, I've, 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 I've done public speaking, uh, I've, I've led huge groups, I've, I've spoken to hundreds of employees at, at a time, it, it was it was, it, it was in a situation where, where I controlled, where I knew the people, uh, I knew my audience, um, I, I was I was the expert, I was the head of HR, people, people looked up to me, uh, and doing this webinar today uh, was for me uh, absolutely a, a, a huge push out of my comfort zone um, and um, even though I had a lot of resistance to, to getting on this webinar, um, I questioned myself, I said to myself, oh my god, what if I'm, what if I'm too boring, what, what if people don't get any worth out of it, what, what if, what if I, I won't be able to sleep, what, what, if, what if people drop off, etc, etc. Uh, but ultimately I, I, I realized that, that in the same way that that I encourage other entrepreneurs to, to take action and, and to make that massive shift uh, and to get out of their comfort zones uh, and to do the things that, that they that are required to grow their businesses. Uh, uh, I, I, need, I need to do that same thing in terms of actually getting here and uh, uh, and putting myself out, out of that out of that uh, out of that uh, comfort zone and, and, and it, it's really as, as entrepreneurs. Uh, um, being an entrepreneur, you're always going to be challenged uh, to do stuff that is highly uncomfortable. Uh, that will, that will sometimes shake you to the core. Uh, it will cause you to, to doubt yourself. Um, uh, uh, I think I'll just say this.
for I, first of all I want to thank everybody I mean we've been on this call for gosh an hour and 40 minutes and you guys have have you know stuck it through so I hope you're getting tons of value from this and really taking down notes I take down notes when Yassine talks all the time and we're friends and I, I get to spend some time with him um, but there's always like these little nuggets that come up and he may have said it again but I, I hear it in a different way but what I also wanted to say was um, that I think that um, it's so, well, obviously my dog has a few things to say too, but I do think that it's so true that sometimes it's, um, that this is what successful people do. They're always moving out of their comfort zone and they're always, you know, going through that terror barrier and that um, it is, you know, what I, I love this quote that I had heard and that was that when you are, when you're interested, you do what's convenient and when you're committed, you do what it takes. And that makes me just think back to what Yassine asked, are you a freelancer or an entrepreneur? So I just wanted to, to mention that. And uh, I'll let you bring us in for a landing, Yassine. Sorry, you know what did you say? I said I'll let you bring us in for a landing. Sorry, you, you broke up? Oh, sorry, I said I'll let you bring us in for a landing. Okay. Um, oh, I, oh, great. And I'll just read some of these, some of the comments we have. Thank you both for taking the time to talk to us about our experiences and giving us very valuable tips to help us achieve our goals. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for. And I love what Deb said. I just have to say this earlier. Deb said, but yeah, seeing I am a writer. Um, when you were talking about the writing, which, uh, she is a writer. So I just want to acknowledge that. Okay, take it away, Yasin. Uh, I was also going to say that after this, Yasin is making, like not speaking to anybody for the rest of the day, or anything, because he'll be exhausted. The, for the introvert, this is this is a big, <laughs> this is a lot of energy. But you did it, Justin. Okay, so hey, I'm here. Just had to unmute myself. Do you do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I I want the the one you know what what really um you know drew drew me to you to um to you know, chase you week after week and and pester you with messages and um and uh, you know get you as a, as a mentor is because um something I want everyone here to really take stock of is that everyone here, uh, majority of people here are in the experts industry and what happens is whatever industry we're in we tend to be around similar people so we kind of get caught in a bubble sometimes and uh, I see it all the time we're, we're in very small circles here as experts with, with different Facebook groups people are in and different uh, like we could say influencers in this industry and many of which are, are my good friends um, and have you know, um, I, I love I love all these people uh, but what I want people to see is that there's, there's so much to business outside of that and really in the experts industry when we look around I'm sure you will agree you're seeing 90 percent of the people we see calling themselves you know business coaches or business mentors as knowledgeable as they are, they're not knowledgeable on business. Most of them are, as you mentioned, mainly freelancers teaching you how to just build, just just to get clients. Just do more marketing, more sales, more marketing, more sales. Oh, you haven't got to a hundred million? Oh, we need more marketing. And um, what drew me to you is, 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 and you're teaching me so many things about the, the bigger, much more important things about growing a business that is outside of that. And so I just want everyone to be aware that if they're just chasing the magical marketing tactic, it's not going to pay off. I mean, look at you. I mean, she said, you know, you, you haven't, your first time doing a webinar, yet you'd be surprised how many people come to me and think they haven't achieved six or seven figure business because they haven't got the right webinar script. And I say, you know, there's people out there making millions and millions who've never even done webinars or Facebook ads and things like that. They're just tactics, but 
in the circles we're in here, the very small circles, um, people are kind of almost brainwashed to think that there's just one or two magic tactics and they'll be able to, to scale up to millions and millions. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Thank you, Justin. So, just for everyone that that's on the call, um, when 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 Justin spoke to me about doing the webinar, um, w one of the things that I mentioned in the beginning is that uh, where we came from, and um, in, in terms of of of, 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 of what we we achieved despite all of the obstacles that, that were in our in our way, starting a business with eight thousand dollars, going all the way to one hundred fifty fifty million dollars. Um, and and what, what, one of the things that, that I would never have, we never would have come to where we are if if if, if people didn't step up um, with advice, um, people didn't offer to coach us and mentor us uh, to get where we wanted to to, to go. Um, and 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 and, and, and um, one of the things that I've talked to Justin about a lot is is is, is about. Um, having gratitude um, and saying thank you for to God, the universe, whatever, for for for, for the blessings that that, 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 we, that that I personally have, have had in life. Um, so uh, part of it was was really to, um, like I said, this was my first webinar, uh, uh, not as polished um, as as something that, that probably someone like Justin would be able would do, uh, but it was just to give to to, to give back to you. To people out there, uh, for, for people who have a big vision and want to build a company that goes just beyond profits and makes a difference in the world. Um, and one of the things I've seen is that, that most of the people selling masterminds, coaching, etc., uh, to entrepreneurs, uh, and Justin pointed this out, have either never built a business uh, of that mag magnitude, uh, because most of those people really are in, in the business of selling information or information products, uh, or, or the ones that the, the the, the, the people that are out there uh, and do have the knowledge um, are not necessarily accessible to, to ordinary entrepreneurs. So, for example, uh, someone that, that that I work with, that I'm working with this year, uh, charges a minimum of seventy-five thousand dollars a year to work with him, um, and that is what, what uh, I, I paid him this year to be to be mentored by him. Uh, but but I but I, I absolutely understand understand that that uh, most the people that people that are just starting out their businesses don't have access to that kind of uh, of resources and, and everybody out there seems to be charging literally uh, foot uh, foot in the mouth to give uh, to mentor and coach. Um, so when, when when Justin asked us what what uh, when, when Justin myself and Hina talked about. What, what we'd like to do, like to do, as a way of giving back, uh, we, we we thought about um, what, what what how how could we help um, entrepreneurs, uh, one of our very successful, profitable businesses, uh, raise the bar in terms of their own lives, in terms of their own minds, in terms of their own peak performance, uh, both in their personal lives uh, and uh, in terms of of their businesses, um, and. W what, what what we ultimately uh, put together was where if for for, for, for people that, that that were looking for mentoring, um, I, I would offer uh, and it's something that, that I've never ever done before. I I, I have um, I, I really take on uh, mentoring clients because just because of the scale of this and, 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 and no time and, and the the couple of consulting clients that I have are all Fortune 500 companies, um, including the U.S. Air Force. Uh, Procter and Campbell, uh, Kellogg's, a uh, couple of major banks, etc. Um, but um, w uh, what we discussed as I, I would offer one one year one-on-one -on -one mentoring coaching with, with, with myself. So basically, literally uh, a call a month. Plus, you'd get any time email, Facebook, WhatsApp access to me, and uh, um, you'd also get access to as many laser calls, coaching calls, 10 or 15 minute calls with me uh, as, as you like. Uh, and then uh, six months of thinking into results with with Hina. Uh, Hina. Yeah, sorry, I just, had, I just had to unmute myself. Yeah, so six months of thinking into results with me. I have um, everything that I have talked about today has come out of that of my own experience and also that material. 
and um, you would have the digital program for life, the digital materials for life. I use the program every single day still because I, I'm constantly learning new things from it as I listen to it. Um, as I'm growing, and then there's uh, weekly calls, weekly webinar calls, and also access for access to me. And I'm really committed to you getting the results that you want. So that's that's a, the broad strokes of what that looks like. And then we will um, beyond that. Um, um, one of the things that that Justin's been trying to get me to do for a long time was to put together a five-day mastermind retreat. So. Uh, myself, Hina, and Justin to to do a uh, to do a mass, Friday mastermind retreat with, with myself, Justin, and Hina in a cool, exotic, fun environment. Um, and uh, just in, in terms of 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 of, of, of value, uh, if you were to go to Hina separately, it would literally be uh, thinking the results. Hina, I think it's five thousand US dollars. That's right. Okay, um, and. Um, Again, um, I, I know Justin previously has told me that working with a uh, with a with a mentor who's sold uh, multiple multi million dollar companies is, is priceless. But um, I, I said I, I, I pay my own mentor uh, close to seventy five thousand dollars a year, um, and, 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 and 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 the cost of the the retreat itself would, would, would cost. Uh, um, Anyway, from five thousand dollars upwards, if you were to do a five a five day retreat with someone like with Justin, uh, so, so Justin, uh, so um, we've 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 looked at we've we've we've, we've looked at, at, at the total value of of of, of, of this the, the one year coaching with me the six years of the six months of coaching with Tina. Uh, and then the five-day mastermind with myself, Hina, and Justin um, in, a, in a cool, uh, exotic environment. Um, and, and just for, 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 for the guys, for the guys on, on, on for you guys that, that, that have stuck on, uh, we, we're going to offer all of this to you guys uh, for $3,997. So um, I know when, 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 when I mentioned to Justin, uh, for literally coaching with me for an entire year plus in a plus retreat for less than four thousand uh, dollars, Justin thought I was absolutely out of my mind, um, and maybe he'd like to share with you why he thought that. Justin, I think Justin had to go to another call. Okay, uh, but I do know I know that he thought that you were out of your mind because that was that was a lot. But in, I know that you know, one of the things he's getting clearer on, you know our why on why to do it and that was definitely making something more accessible for me thinking into results is a game changer and with this combined the 2017 will look very different for you and um, you would start getting your materials immediately and I think there's a link is there a link that you've got there Yasin Let me just check. for people but in the meantime let's take some questions there's a way to kind of unmute so we can actually take your questions live. Um, I've got a mute thing here. So put your hand up if you have a question. If you look in the in your box, there's a hand signal. Um, and then I can mute you if you have any questions or type in your question. And uh, yeah, or you can type in your questions. If you have any questions about this, about what this would look like for you. Any questions? Does this sound great? Does it sound like, you know, five days for Justin and Yasin and then myself and just really, you know, spending the time working on you? Because ultimately this is, so this is not about me, this is not about Yasin, this is about you and getting the results that you want through this. So what we want to do, what we wanted to do was present something to you that would allow you to do that. 
to really, you know, if there were things that you wanted to do, um, to be able to do it now with a system in place, a system for transformation, a system so that, you know, really you're building on all the hard work that you've already done, and now we can take it to the next level. And that, that next level might be different for each and every one of you. So, um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Just raise your hand if you, or type it into the questions. I'm going to just take a look at that. Um, Yasin, I'm just wondering, you know, um, as you get up, as you get the information up for people to sign up now, oh, um, we should tell them that this is actually, as you can see, this has been kind of a really, this has all been for Justin and his group, so this has been about you, and then um, it will be limited to 15 people for the retreat, so this is just limited to the first 15 people that sign up. And then we are going to, um, after the new year, or sorry, not after the new year, after Christmas, it'll be opened up to um, our present clients as well. But right now, we wanted to give, you know, this was, Yasin wanted to give this to Justin's tribe first and foremost. So you guys get uh, first bat at this, and it will, it will be capped at 15, so that we can really make use of our five days together and make it really powerful and impactful for you. Yasin, do you have the, um, the link? I should post it in. Oh, the yes. oh, oh, on the, in the group? Yeah. Oh, yes. okay, yes. great. So it's posted in the Facebook group? I know, in, in the chat box. Oh, in the chat box. Let me see here. Hmm. Do, are you guys seeing the link in the chat box? Let's see. Are you seeing the link? Because if not, we can. I don't see it. Let me, let me try again. Uh, Okay, so we've got, yes, thank you both for a fabulous webinar. You're welcome. I think that's Shelly. I'm going I'm to mute myself for a second. I just posted it again. Did everyone receive it? Did I see it? Oh, yeah, now I see it. So it's in the chat box there. So it's 3997 for uh, one year of coaching with Yasin, rolling into thinking to results immediately. You would start that right away. We would start working together. And then um, a retreat uh, at a great location with Justin, myself, and Yasin, and it's 3997. That's it for all of that. Um, if you guys have any questions around it, you can also shoot us a message privately. Again, this is just for you. This is just for you guys right now, and then it will be opened up, and it will be capped at 15. So if this is something that, um, that sounds exciting for you, if you're ready to jump into this opportunity that's calling you, then, you know, we would welcome the opportunity to really um, work with you and, as, you know, Yasin said, raise the bar. Um, Yasin, do you have anything else you want to add? I, I think if anybody has any questions, uh, um, feel free to, to drop me a, a private message uh, and we, we can talk more uh, what uh, the, 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 the coaching itself and the mentoring would look like. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to, uh, I'm sure Justin would answer questions about the, the, the work that, that, that we've done with, together with him. Uh, in terms of my yes, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have about thinking to results, how the material is delivered, and how you work with the material, and how we would work together as well. But that's been, uh, it's been two hours, and so thank you everybody for sticking around and, and being here. Um, I got lots of value from it, and look forward to, you know, for those that are going to jump in, and that are jumping in right now, uh, really looking forward to working with you and, and um, really, uh, you know, creating the business that is inspiring for you.
and makes a difference. So thank you very much again. Um, Yasin, I'll let you uh, wrap it all up. Okay. Um, thank you guys uh, for joining us today. And if you have any questions uh, regarding the content that, that we spoke about or you uh, want to talk further about just ideas about growing your business, uh, setting mutual goals, uh, finding focus and clarity, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself or Hina. Uh, always always uh, willing and ready to give advice. Hey guys, have a great, great rest of your day. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and um, wishing you all the best. Bye for now. Okay. Bye.